All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about painting your project. Now, you have two options, like I said before, in glass. You can either stain your project, which is just a net more natural look finish to your project and enhances the wood grain, it dyes it. Or you can do painting, which I have acrylic, like craft paints, like you might find in art class, or if you do arts and crafts somewhere else. So you have two different choices. But if you select this choice, I'm going to be taking you through the basic procedures and how you want to go about getting the best possible finish possible. So the primary place where I prefer that you do all your painting is back on the paint table um, where I have all the protective paper laid out to protect the table. Um, so paint back here, don't paint on a workbench or on a machine. And usually I would try to stay away from the finish room because usually that gets pretty crowded. Paint supplies are underneath the table right here in this location. Notice everything has a specific like little container it should be in as well as like a little organizer. This is the way I expect to have them. This paint so, organizer, you'll see all the different colors I have to offer. We'll talk about how to use them properly, clean up the storage and all that stuff a little bit later. On the right hand side here, we have a container meant just for paint brushes. Make sure when you're done with them, you clean them out properly and this thing, clean all paint out of the brushes and put them back in the location once they're dried off with a paper towel. Um, if you do not do this properly and the paint brushes turn hard, I don't replace them. Make sure that you do this the right way the first time. And over here, we have little paint cups, which is what you're going to be putting your paint in. Before you do any painting whatsoever, you got to make sure both of your pieces are completely done and manufactured. I'm not so much worried about like little marks and lines and burn marks, but what I'm worried about is how smooth your project actually is. If you run your fingers over top of it and it feels rough and it's not as smooth as glass, like basically seamless, then you still have some work to do. And remember, we're going to go through the sanding process where we take a file, round over these corners here to blend it in with a rounded edge and you want to start with medium sand the whole entire thing and then once you're done with that you sand with fine after you're completely done with the sanding process which should take you about one to two class days bring it to me i'll double check over all of your pieces and once i give you the uh, go ahead after the checkpoint once you meet me at the checkpoint then you're ready to basically just start painting your stuff when you're back here painting just make sure you follow some ground rules that i want across the board to be followed First thing I would suggest is coming back to the finish room. Underneath this table right here, grab yourself a board with nails. So the board with nails is basically gonna serve the purpose as like our work station, our work like little tabletop. That way we can have air circulation go around everything. It doesn't stick to the table, it doesn't get dirty and it's easy to transport and we don't make a giant mess. So it really doesn't matter to me as far as design is concerned. For this, you can do whatever design or paint scheme or whatever that you want. So just make sure it's school appropriate. And your goal is you want to cover every square inch of your piece of wood, outside, top, bottom, edges, and inside this little groove here. One quick tip, if you want to do a specific design or something, let's say you want to put like an initial or something, it's a good idea to take a pencil and just lightly sketch whatever that design is supposed to be. That way you have like a little guideline and like an idea of how this is going to turn out. So for me, I'm just doing like a quick sketch of like the letter N for my last name, Nicholas. So just like that. That way you can do like the old coloring books where you paint within the lines. But that's your Next choice. Next thing, get yourself some supplies. I have a couple different styles of paint brushes. I have the ones with a wide tip and I have ones with a small tip. So these are the two only ones that I have. Choose whichever one you want. So we're going to be using a small little tip for this demonstration. Next thing you'll need is a pink cup. So we're going to grab one of those out of the container. Right here's our little pink cup. We're going to need that as well. After you do that, you're going to have to figure out, okay, what color do I want to do? For this demonstration, I think I'm going to do two colors. First, I'm going to start out with one. I can do the second one a little bit later. We're going to have a color choice of red, okay? Next is getting your paint. So paint, right here's little pink cups that we deal with. Now the paint cups, they can hold a decent amount of paint, but we don't want to waste them because once you put your paint into the cup, you can't really use it anymore. So we're going to squirt out the size of, I'd say, a quarter in the bottom of this. If we need more paint later, we can always add more. But number one thing I don't want you to do is take the paint, squirt it out, and waste it. So I'd say right there, that's the perfect amount, just enough to fill the bottom. If you need more paint later, you can get some later. Now, if you decide that this is not exactly the color of paint that you want to use, you can always mix colors together. That's completely fine with me, like I said a little bit earlier, but just make sure you do small amounts at a time and don't waste the paint. If you want to mix colors, you do it inside of this little container here, small amounts. Once you're ready to paint, just have at it. Dip your paintbrush 
in. And just like you have before when you do like arts and crafts or art class or whatever, just start painting your design. And your goal is you want to cover up all of like this like yellowish, like tannish wood in whatever design you want. And that might require for some of you multiple coats. And what I would suggest is like when you're painting, of course you want to be nice and neat. Try not to be sloppy. But when you're painting, you don't want to like blob this one. Right now, that's a nice even coat. Blobbing would look something like this, where you can physically see. Let me turn this to the side so you can see. You can literally see like a raised up part right here, how it makes like a little bump. That's way too much paint. The more paint that's on there, it's going to make a mess and it's going to be very difficult to deal with later. So just a nice even coat. You can always put more on later. And um, after this completely dries, we can just keep putting on more and more coats. In the back of the room, I have table number seven. At table number seven, we have a hair dryer. I also have a hair dryer over near the power hand drills. This is going to speed up the process of drying off our wood. If at this point you try to put a second coat on and it's a different color or just try to paint around the edges, chances are your colors will mix together. Use a hair dryer to dry that completely before you move on. There's a total of two tests you can do to see if your paint is dry. First is the touch test. Take it, put your finger on top, and if you have paint or if it feels wet or if there's paint that comes off on your finger, um, then it's most likely not dry. But if your finger is like, there's no like wet spots, I and mean, if it's dry, you're pretty much good to go. And you can also do the second test, which means that you look for a glare. If you hold it at an angle, usually when the paint's wet, it has like a, uh, a sheen on it or a shine. You can kind of see it. But when it dries completely, it has a matte or like just like a dull finish, just like what you see here. If you're the type of person that wants to do splatter painting, you don't want to do that outside where the paint station is across the room over there. You know, do it back in the finish room. I have two spray paint booths. Pick one or the other. And make sure that you have an apron on. Aprons, I keep them outside of this room on the right hand side, as well as you need a pair of glasses too. And you do all your splatter painting. So splatter painting in itself is pretty easy. You get a nice, like, big wad of um, paint on the end of your brush. Hold the one end in your hand. Pull it back so the brush bends like this. And then you let your finger slip, and it splatters the paint all over. Just like that. And you keep doing it until you get your desired effect and as much splatter as you desire. And usually it comes out pretty cool. It gives you some really awesome designs. Now let's say your piece of wood is wet just like mine is here. What you'll do is you'll keep it on the top of the board with nails and you'll take it over to one of the shelves back in the finish room. And here's what you'll do. You'll take a piece of tape, put your name and period on it and stick it on the front. There's a roll of tape on the supply cart right here and Sharpie should be directly underneath it. Then we'll take the tape, stick it directly to your board with nails. If you have multiple boards, of course we'll need multiple name tags, that way we know it belongs to you. And remember, we do this if our board is still dry and we have to clean up, put things away and we don't have enough time to dry with a hair dryer. As far as cleanup is concerned, we're going to make sure we clean out the brush and our little pink cup and anything else we might have used. Clean out up near the sink, make sure you clean everything out properly, get your fingers in there and get all the paint out. Set that to the side, do the same to the paint cup. We don't want to leave any wet paint inside. We want to clean that completely. At the paper towel dispenser, make sure you get some paper towels. Wipe these things so they're completely dry and dry them off. Any paint that you use goes back in the organizer. Brushes, clean brushes. Go back inside the brush holder and then the paint cups go inside the paint cup container and make sure once you're done with that all of your pieces and like all of your stuff in general should be underneath this little organizer here.
So there's two shelves to put all of our list stuff. Once you're ready for project submission, you'll go through the following process. First, we have to get ourselves a rubber band. I keep the rubber bands underneath of my podium. There's a purple container right there. And the rubber bands are kept inside. You need one of those. You're also going to need a Sharpie as well as some masking tape. First, you're going to stretch out some masking tape. I'd say about maybe six inches. And we're going to put a name flag on here. Name flag on it, you have to have your first and last name, as well as the period. That way we know who it belongs to and where to find them. After you have your name tag form or name flag formed, you're going to open up your rubber band, thread it through just like this, and you're going to attach sticky side to sticky side, like so. That way we can identify who it belongs to. Next part is pretty simple. Put both of your pieces together, not assembled with both of the slots, but one on top of another, just like that. And then you're gonna put it in the proper location for grading, which I'll tell you guys during class. Make sure that before you submit your project, nothing is completely like wet or damp or anything, or else it will stick together. Everything has to be dry, and there should be no sticky spots whatsoever. Make a name flag, put it all together, and please, whatever you do, don't use masking tape to wrap it the whole way around. If you do, most likely, the adhesive on the masking tape is strong enough that it will rip your paint right off, which is not good.